Houston is the biggest city in a state known for having big stuff. So as you might expect, they don't shy away from building stadiums, which are amongst the biggest of the big stuff that you can build. Enough babbling, here are the stadiums and arenas of Houston, Texas. We start off with the Texas Specialty, that being a high school football stadium that costs tens of millions of dollars to build. There's a lot of money and they got a great stadium out of it. It has plenty of features that I appreciate, such as the beautiful facade, the double-decker seating along the sidelines, that gets spectators close to the field, the grass embankments, and of course, everything is better with a huge flat screen TV. Even a McNugget? Even a McNugget. Toyota Center is the home of the city's aptly named NBA team, the Houston Rockets. It has a fairly nice exterior consisting of brick and glass. It actually looks pretty prestigious. Perhaps a Lexus logo would have been more fitting. The interior doesn't deviate too far from the typical NBA arena layout. It's symmetrical, there's a huge center hong video board, there's a capacity approaching 20,000. I suppose the main thing that differentiates it is the fact that it isn't exactly a continuous bowl. It's somewhat segmented. Looks good regardless. Reckling Park. This is home to a team called the Rice Owls, which is perplexing because According to The Simpsons, rice makes birds explode. Perhaps the rice owls have developed an immunity to it over the years. Nonsense aside, this is one of the more impressive examples of a college ballpark going round. And it's not even shared with a minor league team as some of the better ones are. Apart from the regular features that you'd expect to see, it also has a rather nice mini skyline backdrop. While we're on the campus of Rice University, we should check out Rice Stadium, a venue that was once the preeminent football stadium in the city. As a former Super Bowl host, you could say its glory days are over, because that's certainly not happening again. But the stadium has been renovated in recent years and is better than it's ever been. So quality over notoriety, as the old saying goes. Despite the renovations, the design is actually still pretty similar to the original. Tudor Fieldhouse. I'm mildly disappointed that this place doesn't have a Tudor inspired facade, however, it would look a little out of place on this campus. It might not be from the Tudor era, but the arena has been around for over 70 years. So it isn't exactly state of the art, but they've done a decent job of keeping it up to date. I quite like the cavernous nature of the seating, particularly those at the ends. It must make for a slightly more intense atmosphere. Constellation Field. This is located in a city in the Houston metro area called Sugarland, which might seem odd considering that the US is all about that high fructose corn syrup, but there was actually a cane sugar plantation and mill here back in the day. Also, the name high fructose corn syrup land doesn't really roll off the tongue. Anyway, this state of the art minor league ballpark has some unique features, my favorite of which is the Texas shaped video board. Well, it's still a rectangular screen, but close enough. Oh, and how can I not mention that the team that plays here are called the Sugarland Space Cowboys? That's brilliant. Pearland ISD Stadium. Well, it might not be in the shape of Texas, but this too has a type of video board that you don't see all that often. Especially not in a high school football stadium. An external one. It's bigger than the screen on the inside, which is a very odd choice, but I suppose people want to watch something whilst tailgating. Other than that, it's fairly typical of a high school stadium, and that does include a running track that surrounds the field. W.W. W. Thorne Stadium. This place is actually currently undergoing an extensive renovation that's set to be completed next year. Even in its current state, or the state that we can see here, it's looking like a fine stadium. It has all the features you'd expect, but the sunkenness of the stadium, as well as the positioning of the press boxes, set it apart from the rest. Behind one end zone is an arena which makes for an interesting look. Speaking of which, M.O. Campbell Center. As you can see, the exterior is pretty plain and simple, but once inside, 
there's a lot more going on as you might expect. The seating layout here is quite unusual, in a good way. You've got one empty end with a big grey wall. Looks like they've hung up some artwork up there to liven up the place. And over on the other side there is some interesting corner seating. It's looking great for a high school arena. Minute Maid Park is one of just a handful of baseball stadiums in the world that features a retractable roof. And while it might not look the prettiest on the outside, it certainly comes in handy in the hot and humid and actually quite wet Houston summers. I believe July gets the most rain. That's not the only thing that sets this stadium apart. I can't talk about Minute Maid Park without mentioning the train that sits atop this pseudo viaduct. After every Astros home run, it toots its horn and rolls along the tracks. After every Astros loss, it derails and sadly injures most of the spectators that sit below. A proud tradition, a strange tradition. Pridgen Stadium. For a fairly small stadium, this has a very grandiose exterior, at least over on the western side. That's got to be 11 or 12 giraffes in height for those that use the giraffe scale. That is the side facing the high school itself, so that makes perfect sense. The interior is symmetrical and fairly simple by comparison, but it has received tens of millions of dollars worth of renovations in recent years. So the facilities are pretty good. Galena Park ISD Stadium is another very tidy looking high school football stadium with some nice landscaping including corners filled with groves of trees, which I like to see. The exterior is not quite as impressive but it's alright. If I could point out a negative it would be the very shallow gradient to the seating, which means that spectators in the upper rows are quite far from the field but no big deal. Health and Physical Education Arena. Wow, that was definitely named by one of the school administrators, rather than a popular vote. I suppose it's better than Arena McArena Reface, as the public would have chosen. Somewhat matching the exterior, the interior has a whole lot of burgundy going on, which along with the retro scoreboard up there, accentuates the old school look. Quite like it though. Also kind of like the look of the corners that are not filled in by seats. George Turner Stadium. This is situated at a high school called Humble High School, which is a good name because humility is probably in the top three most important attributes one could have, along with honesty and integrity. And I should know because I'm actually the best at humility. Nobody does humility like I do. Anyway, I wouldn't say it's a humble stadium. I mean, this section is quite out there. Is that a bridge up top? Looks cool. Aviva Stadium. This is way under the capacity cutoff for this video, but I included it due to the novelty factor. It was purpose built for rugby, specifically the Houston Sabercats of Major League Rugby. The stadium might be small, but it has a bit of everything. The western stand is a covered all seater, specifically chairback seats in this rather nice yellow, grey, and white colour scheme. Over on the eastern side, there's some bench seating mixed in. There are some small grass embankments about the place and a decent sized video board. Shell Energy Stadium is home to the one and only professional soccer club in the city. I've often stated that it has one of my favorite exteriors going round. For one, it's the unique geometric shape that I like. Also, the color scheme of silver and orange might just be my favorite of all color combinations. Of course, there are probably several people watching that think that looks hideous. Such is the nature of the human mind. Inside, it's not quite as flashy. What this stadium lacks is roof coverage. I mean, there is a decent amount, but considering that Major League Soccer takes place over the summer months, there's a lot of exposed seating. At least the band don't have to worry about sunburn. Abshia Stadium. And it seems like the only thing Texans like more than building high school football stadiums is making giant car parks surrounding them to park their giant utes and light up their giant barbies. Sorry, let me translate that. Uh, parking lot, pickup trucks, barbecues. There we go. 
I appreciate the splash of colour coming from these burgundy benches. High school football stadiums, although impressive, can be a little monochromatic, generally speaking. Cy Fair FCU Stadium This extravagant stadium is one of the better high school football stadiums in the states, and therefore the country. For starters, the grandiose neoclassical inspired brick exterior looks spectacular. The interior is quite simple by comparison, but it has basically everything you could want from a high school stadium. A grass berm would have been nice on the northern side, but like the one we saw earlier behind the southern end zone, there's a matching arena. Quite a beautiful one. It goes by the name of Berry Center. This actually has an even more impressive exterior, and perhaps interior as well. But comparing football stadiums and basketball arenas is like comparing apples and basketball arenas. A compact double-tiered seating layout is always a good thing, but something I appreciate even more than that is the windows that let in a bit of natural light. In the daytime, of course. Oh, perhaps you could watch football and basketball simultaneously from the concourse, I don't know. Leonard Merrill Center. I'm learning that if there's one thing that Texans love more than their big parking lots, it's their red brick exteriors. I don't blame them, it's a timeless look. What is less common is a teal color scheme, as is the case on the inside. I'm a fan. I think teal might be my favorite color, you know. Not quite green, not quite blue. Teal is the color for me and you. Yeah, beautiful venue. TDECU Stadium it is one of the most modern college football stadiums going round. The exterior features a breathable metallic facade which looks fantastic, but it's not quite as spectacular as the skyline view that spectators in the southern stand are greeted with. The stadium was actually designed to maximise that view, however some recent construction has blocked the view for some spectators. Anyway, the view of the field is what's important and every seat in the house is a pretty good one. Fertitta Center Although having opened in 1969, the arena was extensively renovated just a few years ago at a cost greater than the original construction cost, even adjusted for inflation. There was a lot of demolition work done, and it's arguably a completely new venue. The seating layout is not a million miles away from the original, but these widescreen video boards and the ring of screenage above are all new of course. Yes, I said screenage. I find that you can just add idge onto any noun and it becomes a wordage. Schroeder Park. The Cougars ballpark might not quite be on the level of the Rice Owls. The capacity is much smaller, the field is artificial, but at least there are no exploding birds here. Well, not Rice related anyway. I'm sure occasionally a bird swoops in front of the pitcher at just the wrong moment and... Yeah. Interestingly, this place once hosted a short-lived cricket team called the Texas Arrowheads. They should have known it wouldn't work out. AT&T is much more popular than cricket in Texas. Del Mar Stadium. Compared to the arena next door, which we'll get to in a minute, this has a fairly boring design. There's no facade worth mentioning and the interior is made up of two identical monochromatic stands and not much else. But I have to remember, this is a high school stadium. For that purpose, it's not bad at all. Delmar Fieldhouse. I mentioned that I like the timeless aesthetic of a red brick exterior, but something clean and modern like this is just as good. Is it timeless though? That remains to be seen. Come to think of it, considering how flashy this place is, it's kind of weird that they opted for one of these older style scoreboards rather than a video board. The court itself is interesting, it has the city skyline along the sideline, and of course the Lone Star, signifying Houston's close relationship with Chile, I assume. Veterans Memorial Stadium. Wow, there's a Pasadena outside of California? Next you'll be telling me there's a Paris outside of Texas. The stadium opened way back in the 60s, but has been given an extensive makeover in recent years. That's left it looking quite smart, but still fairly simple. Oh, hang on a second. Regarding the Paris thing, 
How could I have been so foolish? Of course there's a Paris in Idaho. There it is. The Lone Star Expo Center. As the name suggests, this is not really a sports venue. But it does host rodeos, which is pretty much sport, isn't it? The arena is basically a big shed. But there's nothing bare bones about the seating bowl itself. They've opted for plastic chair back seats rather than hay bales, which a lot of rodeo venues opt for. Which is a good thing, of course. It's an interesting venue for sure. Energy Stadium is the second stadium in the city with a retractable roof. Not many cities can say they have two. That would be a bit of a weird brag, to be honest. Anyway, unlike Minute Maid, this roof is made of fabric, which lets in plenty of light even when closed. Another notable feature here are the huge video boards at each end. One downside is that they are up higher than uh, Snoop Dogg in Amsterdam, I don't know. Legacy Stadium is yet another high school stadium built in the last decade. It's looking pretty sharp. They've done something slightly different with the exterior, which is good. And I hate to keep mentioning it, but in the rest of the world, a high school stadium costs no more than the $2 million video board that makes up a small part of this $70 million stadium. What makes it all the more ridiculous is, as you probably saw, there is another football stadium right next door. But that doesn't mean the capacity cutoff, so I'm not going to talk about it. Tully Stadium. Maybe I should have been a landscaper, because whenever I see a stadium that makes extensive use of landscaping like this, an earthen stadium I suppose you could call it, well it just looks infinitely better than if these were standalone stands with exposed steel and concrete everywhere. The way the stands curve and join perfectly with the grass berms is the icing on the cake. Love this stadium. The Astrodome was known as the 8th wonder of the world back in the day, and it was home to the Astros and the Texans. However, they left decades ago. Despite this, it's still standing as you can see. Just like the other 7 wonders of the world, like the Pyramids of Las Vegas. Inside is a bit of a mess, but we'll still talk about it like it's a functioning stadium. The seating layout is typical of the baseball-football hybrids of the era, with the added benefit of being dry and warm year-round, which would have been quite impressive in the 60s. These iconic lights would have been as well. I think there have been plans to repurpose this building, but they've not really gained traction. Right next door is Energy Arena, formerly known as the Astro Arena. It's in a similar situation to the Astro Dome in that the sports tenants left long ago. However, it's still in good condition and does host plenty of non-sporting events, such as wrestling, concerts, monster trucks, conventions, monster truck conventions, Disney on ice, Warner Brothers on ice, chili cook-offs, salad cool-downs, spelling bees, spelling hornets, chess tournaments, Connect Four tournaments, and whatnot. Stallworth Stadium. This looks like it's situated in an almost rural setting, but I looked it up and apparently it's still in the metro area. There's not much I can say about the design other than it's about as boring as you could possibly get. Symmetrical, colorless, lacking facades of any sort. It is kind of large though, so it's got that going for it. Trailor Stadium. Well, this is basically just a smaller version of the last one. We have the addition of a running track, so although it mightn't be unique or particularly well equipped, at least Trailor Stadium isn't trailer trash. Far from it, it's just a run of the mill high school stadium. When a viewer suggested that I include Lakewood Church in this video, I was a little bit perplexed. However, it is actually a former NBA arena that was taken over by a church, which isn't all that surprising once you take a look inside, despite the extensive Jesusification. I feel like there's never been a more appropriate time to say, only in America. So there you have it. Do they need that many stadiums? Probably not, but anything else would be communist. If you're new, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.